I can't get these things to work, so I'm just going to leave it. Um, I'm going to share, and then can, can you guys let them in, please? Let them all in. Do we let them all in? Yes, when please. Adelo didn't go okay. to plan, a young Hans-Jörg Gerber knew things could be better. And so begins the journey. From then till now. kept on going. Hans-Jörg Gerber created the first Thermomix. If all we wanted was to make a food processor, we would have stopped long back. But we wanted to create an extraordinary experience, which is why we're still going. Then, now, always. Thermomix. How's that? I thought that's a, it's a fantastic um, video. Um, welcome to um, those of you who've joined us tonight. Oh, hang on. I might have to try and hold on. Oh. Hang on. Sorry. <laughs> Could you all see that? I don't know what was happening. Anyway, um, I've now lost Cookie Doo probably, but that's okay. So welcome to tonight. Um, thank you for coming along and joining us. And um, I will just try and... Okay, so hi, Vicky. So just having a look at the names, a lot of familiar names here, which is really exciting um, to see you come and, um, and join us tonight. So we promise you um, a steaming hot night. It's all about the Varoma tonight. So if it's something that you have stuck in your um, kitchen cupboard and you haven't used, which is, I do hear, um, you're missing out on a whole heap of recipes. Um, and um, so hopefully you'll go away inspired with some great things to try. And I know Nicole is doing the dessert tonight and they're all busting to, for her to, to steam up and, um, and get going so they can eat it. All right. So before we start, I just want you to think about a few things as we go through the next hour. So the first one is, would you like to learn more about your Thermomix and how to get the most out of it? Um, could you do some cash just to help with, you know, maybe it's, you know, school fees or, you know, you're planning a reno or you want a holiday and we all need a holiday this year. Um, do you have, have a think about who you know who would really benefit from having one of these Thermomixes in their kitchen? And also have a look and see how, about how much fun we have as a team. So I'm going to leave you with that and we are going to get started. Um, first of all, I'm just going to explain about the basics of the Varoma and how we use it. So if anyone's unsure, in case it is hiding in your cupboard, this is your Varoma. It is the most amazing um, adjunct to your Thermomix. 
it also um, it also means that you can increase the volume of, of food when you're cooking. So if you've got a big family, great to do layered cooking. And Irene's going to shoot. Irene's already told me she's going to feed half the street tonight. So, um, so that's how much food you can actually make when you use your Thermomix. All right. Uh, and just in your basic cookbook, if you have a TM6, you have your white basic cookbook. Um, towards the back, if you've got a TM5, you have a green one, um, and it's towards the front. But in the back or the front of your book, there's a whole section on steaming. All right, it gives you time to steam. And what, one of the really important things it says is that what, before you start steaming, you must make sure that there's at least 500 mils, 500 mils of, uh, can, can you, Heather said she can't hear me. Are you got, can you hear me? Oh no. Mm -mm -mm. I can hear you. You can hear me? Yep. Them then, Boone. <laughs> I can hear you. You can hear me? Okay. Yeah. All right. All good on this end. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So when you're steaming, you have to have a minimum of 500 grams or mils of um, water or liquid in your Thermomix. All right. Um, and then what you do is you steam um, a varoma temperature for the stated time. And you will get guidelines in here. Um, of, of how long to steam different things for. If you are steaming for longer than 30 minutes, you need to add an extra 250 grams of water for each extra 15 minutes. So that's in the back of your basic cookbook, the TM6, in the front of your basic cookbook, the green one, if you have a TM5. TM31 owners, if we do have any of those, I'm not quite sure where it is, but um, you can get in contact with whoever invited you along tonight and they will help you with that. Okay, so that's the basics of the Thermomix, um, uh, steaming in the Thermomix. And we are going to go to Nicole because she's gonna get us started. Sorry, I'll just unmute myself. So uh, hi everyone, I'm making the sticky toffee puddings tonight. Um, and I've got to tell you the household is very excited. Um, they're hanging out for these ones. So um, I've made a bit of a start because there is a few things that take a little time. Um, so to start with, what I've done is I've got a small bowl here with my dates in it. I measured 150 grams of dates into here and I put in uh, one and a half teaspoons of bicarb soda. Um, and that has been sitting in hot water for the last 20 minutes. Uh, I also have oh, my Varoma ready. Inside the Varoma, I've got my little Thermomix stereol moulds. Um, which uh, these ones are silicon. Um, I'm still quite paranoid, so I have breathed them as well because I really want them to come out nicely. Um, and that's all I've done so far. So I'm going to move on to the next step. Um, this is step nine of 34 for these ones. So we've already done the soaking and we've already done the getting the moulds ready to go. So I'll just move my dates out of the way now. And first off, we're going to place 60 grams of unsalted butter, um, which I've already cut into pieces and I've weighed out and it's at room temperature at the moment. So that's my 60 grams. Uh, 60 grams of soft brown sugar or brown sugar. I've just got standard brown sugar. And 75 grams of golden syrup, or you can use honey. I've got golden syrup because that's what I had handy. It is super sticky, so I just want to make sure I've got enough of it in there. You don't want to miss out on any of the sauce. Now, when you're making this sauce, because it is... Um, it's pretty basic. You can actually double the recipe um, and you don't have to increase the cooking time. So you can just double it up to get more sauce going at once. Uh, I've got 40 grams of full cream milk. And a quarter of a teaspoon of natural vanilla extract. I 
just going to pop the lid back on. And now this sauce is going to cook away here for seven minutes at 100 degrees on speed two. So I'll switch over to speed two and hand you back to Mandy. Thanks. We're actually going to Irene next. Thanks, Boone. Hi, everyone. I am making Italian chicken and couscous salad with a chickpea soup. Um, I also make this soup not just in an Italian style, I do it in a Moroccan style. So you can add some cumin into the soup, um, use some dukkha over the salad, really, really lovely. Okay, so let's start. Let's go down. Okay, I've been busy chopping. Got home. Chop, 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 chop. Okay, so parmesan cheese and, and my garlic goes in there. And of course, I've missed a salad. And just for everyone's um, info, I buy block cheese. Um, I don't buy grated cheese. Grated cheese has anti-caking agents in it. Um, don't worry about block of buying block cheese. It won't go dry as long as you pop it in the freezer. So if you're not going to use it all, no stress, just um, pop it in the freezer. Um, and it comes back to your room temperature in about 20 minutes. Okay. So it just asks me to scrape that down. I think we're good to go. Um, you're gonna laugh at me, Mandy. It said to put in 40, 40 grams of fresh basil leaves. I counted 40 leaves. <laughs> really very tired today doing number crunching. So it asks for some fresh basil, some flat leaf parsley, 160 grams of raw cashews, um, one, one to two tablespoons of white wine vinegar, um, 60 grams of extra virgin olive oil. So I'm just gonna pop all of this in first. So I've washed all my, my 40 leaves. And I'm just going to tar that off. Got some lovely olive oil from my, my uncle who's passed away now, but he we actually got a delivery last week of the last batch of oil. Um, he sent it before he passed away. So oh, wow. May he rest in peace, but amazing oil. Thank you, Uncle. Um, so 60 grams of olive oil. Um, Irene, um, Vicky's got a question for you. Are the chickpeas canned or soaked overnight? Chickpeas for the recipe? Yes. No, it's they're raw. We're actually going to mill them down into a flour. So we're making our own chickpea chickpea flour. So I'm using the pulse function. You probably can't see that. It's the little swirl. And basically, I'm actually controlling the consistency. And effectively, I'm making a pesto. So that was turbo. Yeah, so basically, five or you know, four or five turns on turbo. And I've made pesto. Nice and quick and easy. So again, I'm not going to use this. Now, what I tend to do is if I want to make some dip and also then make my dressing, I double this, set some aside, and then leave, you know, four really heaped tablespoons um, of the dip to make my salad dressing. I think you can always, there's always something to use pesto. We often have it in the Yeah, food. yeah, so by all means, make... Make lots more, set some, set some aside in a jar, use it for a dip with some crackers. Um, and anyway, um, yeah. Okay, so to that, I'm adding some lemon juice from my mummy's tree. We're adding in the rest of the olive oil. And we're just going to blend this. Effectively, I'm making my salad dressing for five seconds on speed. Six. 
So I'm just popping that straight into this bowl. This is where my, my vegetables are going to go and I'm going to stir through in a little while. So this will all make sense. So get this into, into this bowl. Have you used this for anything else, Mandy? I guess you um, could marinate stuff in it as well. Yeah, you probably could. I actually haven't made this recipe, but um, yeah, just with the pesto, I put pesto, I put a pesto in my scrambled eggs in the morning and all sorts. Yeah, great. Yeah. I mean, I'd be too much lemon juice. I'd be a little bit too much lemon juice, but um, yeah, good idea. Okay, so that's my salad dressing ready to go. That asks me to, to clean my bowl. But one of the benefits of becoming a consultant is you get to earn some. So I've got my second bowl ready to go. And of course, we've got the offer on at the moment. Anybody buying a TM6 at the moment can get a second bowl and blade set for $99. Now the next part of this recipe asks me to put in basically 400 grams of pumpkin, 550 grams of chicken breast into my Varoma dish. Now, for those that have people that are either vegan or vegetarian at home, they still have a mixture. So what I've done is I've actually put the chicken inside one of our vacuum seal bags. So anyone who's bought our vacuum sealer, that's on our mix shop, you get the little vacuum sealer. We also get these gorgeous bags and these are reusable because they seal at the top and you can wash them out and reuse them over and over again. So that's what I've done. So I put my chicken in the bag. That way I keep the juices separate um, and I can do two types of salad. I can do a chicken salad um, and I can do a strictly um, vegetarian salad. Okay, the next part of this dish asks you to put basically, probably can't see it, but it's basically asking you to scrunch paper up with some, with some water. And there's a video. I love the fact that we've got videos now on the TM6, which is brilliant. And then to line it with soaked couscous, which is what I've done here. Now, again, straight from our mix shop, we've already got pre-cut, we've got pre-cut bag or pre-cut paper. So that'll fit into your aroma tray. And if you're doing things like steam dumping, there's two types of bags on the mix shop. You can tell I haven't used these, gotta open the bag. <laughs> if you're doing dumplings, Hopefully we can talk Boone into doing another dumping class for us. There's a perforator one as well. So they'll go straight through and help to see your dumping. Anyway, yeah. so they're all ready to go. We're going to need to catch the fish. For the fish, you catch the crab. Yes, yes. Okay. Next, it's asking me to basically pop my, my chickpeas into my bowl, which I've done. Can you all make sure you're on mute if you're not um, meant to be talking, please? I can hear somebody else in the background. Okay, lead on. We're going to basically make chickpea flour. So, guys, I don't know who's um, doing this at the moment. So, if you're buying pre ground spices, they probably have about a three to four month shelf life. Um, if you're buying icing sugar, you know, you're probably paying three times the price. There's a lot of specialty flours that they'll charge three or four times the price. So basically buy your own grains um, and make your own flour. So much, much cheaper. And particularly with spices, the flavor is so much more intense when it's been freshly ground. So I'm just gonna mill this, mill these chickpeas. Speed nine. Um, one of the tips in the recipe talks about roasting um, roasting the chickpeas before you make your flour, um, just to add a little bit of flavour. I don't think it needs it. It's really just as it's really just to give you that thickening. Now it asks me to set this aside. Um, you don't have to. I will, but you probably don't need to because um, I'm not going to wash the bowl out. And really, all I'm doing is chopping the vegetables 
um, next and it's going back into the same same jug. So anyway, we'll do it. Okay, vegetable stock paste. Hopefully you're all making your fresh veggie stock. So it says one to one and a half um, tablespoons. I do two heaped, two heaped tablespoons. Um, now it's asking me for my other ingredients. So brown onions. Um, I'm gonna put my olive oil in straight here. Um, I only had one carrot, so that's all I'm gonna use. Um, you could use some pumpkin. I had some leftover pumpkin, I could have used that. Um, so my garlic's in there, some about four garlic cloves. Now you can use turnip, celeriac, parsnip. Um, you could also use kohlrabi. I found some lovely um, celeriac, for anyone who doesn't know what that is. That's the bottom of the celeriac, so think of it as a round vegetable. It's very root-like, so it's basically the root of a, of a celery. Um, much more peppery flavour. So I'm going to pop all those in there. Got to love a soup that you can use all the bits and pieces in too and adapt. Absolutely. We're essentially going to chop these for eight seconds on speed five. That's my, my coleslaw. <laughs> Very sloppy with my, um, my stock paste. <laughs> Oops, sorry. That's, it asks for 1.1 litres of water. I'll add a little bit more in a, in a little bit. You won't worry about it right now. Okay, I'm adding back my chickpea powder. This is where you can get creative. So I'm actually using, I don't know if anyone's bought the yogurt jars. They're also great for spice jars. So I'm using mine as spice jars. Um, I'm going to take this a little bit Moroccan. So I'm adding a pinch of cumin. And because I like heat, I'm adding some cayenne pepper. Probably enough, not enough chili for Boone though. Is it, is it too much for your mum? <laughs> <laughs> I won't have the soup, but that's okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna freeze it. This freezes really, really well. I was I'm chuckling, Irene. The recipe before you start cooking, it's actually asking you to weigh out your pie nuts and some your baby spinach. That's so we can compile our salad, which I'll show you in a second. But now we're going to put everything together. So our lid goes on. I'm going to put my varoma in place. Very, very important when you are putting your varoma in place that you don't lock that hole. Remember, this is the only part that's steaming up. So you can see based on the 400 grams, there's heaps of room. You could add at least, you know, another two times the amount of the... Um, a bit more chicken, you can certainly add a lot more pumpkin and vegetables in this so you can bulk it out. Um, but I'm leaving that gap so that steam can come up. And also similarly with the cut of that tray, and um, with the tray here, you need to make sure those vents aren't blocked on the side, otherwise whatever's in here is not gonna cook evenly either. So make sure you're not blocking the holes. So we're gonna cook this for 17 minutes. Um, just before I go, so I am feeding the street today. So this is my very large stainless steel bowl. In it, I've got a bag of 200 grams of spinach leaves, a mountain of herbs, my cucumbers, my tomatoes, my olives, all ready to go. And that's basically, I'm going to mix all of this once it's warm into my salad dressing. And then that comes into here, gets mixed all together. And then you're all coming for dinner right now. Well, sounds good to me. It looks amazing. Thank you. Um, Nicole, sorry, are you done, Irene? Yeah, fantastic. Nicole, have you, is your seven minutes up? Yes, it is. So I've got my sauce, which I've 
decant it into a little, if I can show you without pouring it. It's quite thin at the moment, but it does say to leave it out for about 10 minutes and then pop it in the fridge so it can thicken up. So it's just doing, it's having a little cool down now and then I'll pop it in the fridge so it's ready for when the puddings are ready. Um, but I can move on to the next step now. Um, so what it's asking me to do without cleaning the jug, which is my favorite thing in the world, um, is to add the reserved baits and the soaking water. So I've got these here, I'm just gonna throw them in. Let me try and do it without splashing myself. So the dates are quite soft now because they've been soaking in that water for a little while. And then next it's asking us for another 40 grams of unsalted butter, which I've got here again, cut into pieces and at room temperature. Um, and it wants 110 grams of dark brown sugar um, or brown sugar. I just, I really use brown sugar for everything. I don't alternate between dark and light. I don't use enough to warrant having that many in the cupboard. So. I've just got dark sugar, uh, sorry, brown sugar, and 150 grams of plain flour. Now I've also put my half a teaspoon of baking powder in this, so I didn't have to measure it out now. Oh, a little bit stuck. Definitely doesn't want to go in. Uh, and then we have one egg. I'm just going to find my lid. And we're putting the lid back on with the measuring cup in place. And I'm just going to mix that for 20 seconds at speed five. Um, just while Nicole's doing the beautiful puddings, um, just a tip, guys. Um, the the dairy or molds she's using uh, are perfect for it. Don't use the ceramic ones. If you do, it takes a lot longer. It can take anywhere from sort of five to ten minutes longer to cook. It takes a long time for the steam to penetrate and heat up the um, the ceramic molds. Yeah. Thanks for that, Irene. So that's mixed up now. Um, and you can see I've got the mix there. Now I'm just going to put it into the mold and steam it um, with 700 grams of water. Um, so as Mandy said, you need to have at least 500, this asks for 700. So if you're using a guided recipe, it will tell you how much to put in um, so it cooks correctly. Um, and then I'm going to steam them for 30 minutes. So I'm not going to make you watch me try to get them into the molds evenly. Um, I'll leave you with Mandy to go on with the next bit. Oh, you're funny. Um, all right. So um, thanks, guys. Um, I, and, you know, I'm, I'm very inspired to actually try both those recipes. The chickpea one, I, I sort of was thinking it was going to be a soup. I haven't read, read the recipe, but, you know, with a whole lot of chickpeas in it, but, it, but that's the thickener. And obviously you can... You know me, use up what you've got in the, on the fridge. So um, yeah, wonderful. All right, so I'm just gonna move on to my other um, camera here, because I'm making the vegetable chili. Okay, and um, I'm gonna give you a little tour of the TM6 for anybody who doesn't have one in a minute, but we're gonna just get started and get going with this. So I need to put in two garlic cloves. Um, so I've got these, I've got a couple of things here. Um, so I got a whole lot of organic garlic recently and I literally peeled the whole lot. Irene's lovely tip. Um, you know, I, actually I didn't do the whole thing because I, I was, had to do something at the same time. But basically you can put the, your, your peeled, um, sorry, your unpeeled garlic cloves in your Thermomix speed for um, reverse and that will flick a lot of, and certainly loosen off all the, um, all the outside bits. So um, I did that and I peeled... Yeah, it's a kilo. Uh, so they're all sitting in my freezer now. That was my onion. I've got my chili here, popping that in as well. And I'm gonna pop the lid on. All right, three seconds, speed seven. 
And if you don't know, if you just touch the screen of your Thermomix, you don't have to touch the next button, just touching the screen will stop the, the sound for you. Okay, I'm going to make sure I don't breathe, inhale that, because that's going to be seriously wicked, I think. All right, scrape down the sides. Twenty grams of olive oil. Makes it so easy, doesn't it? When you just all you do is follow instructions on the screen. No recipe books. No looking up and down. No turning your iPad on and off. Um, just doing it literally from the screen. All right. So now I have here on this um, plate, I've got two teaspoons of cumin. I have two of coriander, I have half of cinnamon, and I have my salt, they're all on there, so they're going in. And the black pepper is lurking somewhere. I'll put that, hold on. I put it in a really safe place, here it is, got it. Then I'm going to pop the um, lid on and it's going to steam for three minutes at Varoma temperature. I just have to turn it up to speed two. And whilst it's doing this, we're going to move over to Keisha and um, see what she's going to cook for us tonight. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm making garlic and ginger steamed whole fish. I'm using the barramundi. I got it from Costco. There are about two whole fish um, sold in the Costco. So at first, we I scrunch the paper and wet it under the sink pretty well and lay down on a tray and... and um, it will steam the fish very nicely and it will keep the juices for, uh, as well. So if I start cooking, it tells me the same thing to put what I just said. And it asking me to put four green spring onions here. So on the base, the fish will be sitting on it. And it tells me next uh, season and um, starfish cavities with uh, thinly sliced ginger. And this recipe is an American recipe. So it tells me in, uh, in American uh, measurements, not measurements. Uh, um, so here's the whole fish and I'll put some ginger inside it. Sorry, can you just have, show us the fish again? Yeah, um, I just was... put the ginger in. Yeah. And the fish sits oh, on Oh, wow. That. Looks amazing. So that's it for time being. And we put this aside. And we will make the dressing for the fish, um, which is, we're doing this over later. You, so, you, you go for it, yeah. Yeah, so we stuff the fish and asking me now to put in a Thermomix uh, six garlics, two green onions chopped, and ginger peeled, about a half an oz. So uh, I'm not sure what is in grams. An ounce, an ounce, half an ounce. Ounce, ounce, sorry. It's all right. So I've got a little bit more, I like it, so it doesn't matter. And cilantro leaves, uh, half an ounce. Yeah. 
Next, uh, dry chili, half a teaspoon. I just eyeball it. And black bean uh, chili sauce. I don't have black bean chili sauce. It was very hard to find anywhere. Uh, so I've got sriracha. So I'm gonna put a little bit of sriracha in, in it. And rice wine vinegar, about two teaspoons. I'm pouring a little bit more because I like a little bit of sauce because I'm going to have it with steamed rice and you can have it with the veggies at the same time cooked. Uh, I'll skip the, and sesame oil, two teaspoons. And we will chop this now. We put the um, this, the measuring cup, and it will go for five seconds. And it asking me to scrape down the sides. which I'll do now and I'll show you how it chopped nicely. Here you are. Can you see it? Here we are. And now insert measuring cup and Cook for two minutes on 212 degrees for on speed five. So it will cook now. Okay, so we're gonna come back. The, uh, the, the herbs. All right, coming back to me now for a bit, Keisha. Yeah. Thanks, Boone. Um, yeah, so we're going to come back to my screen, in fact, Boone, please, wherever that's gone. Yeah. All right, so um, I was just looking to what's next. So I have, um, that's all my beautiful spices. I tell you, I had to move away from the the um, the steam coming out because, goodness me, it's going to make me cry. Um, all right, so I've got to put in now a can of tomatoes. So just a can of chopped tomatoes going in. Uh, 200 grams of water. So I'll just give my can a little bit of a rinse out with the water. A bit more. Okie doke, running out of space. And then one teaspoon, I haven't got white sugar, I've got um, a little bit of raw sugar. Just filling in. I don't know, um, Irene, is there some reason why we had to put sugar in with tomatoes? Do you know any, any reason why that might be? Um, Bert, is it asking for tin? I wasn't watching the rescue. Was it asking for tin tomatoes? Yeah, it was tin tomatoes. Yeah, so we changed the acidity level. Apparently, you lose it when they're tinned. Okay. This is fresh, so you have to add some back. Otherwise, you get it's too acidic in flavor. Thank you. I knew you'd know. Uh, it was on some <laughs> food video somewhere, some point. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. So next, I'm going to put my Varoma on top. Yeah. Oops. And I'll just try and lift this up a little bit more so you can see. All right, and then I've got to put in 350 grams of pumpkin. So it says three centimeter pieces. So I've got them like this. Um, so sometimes, you know, it, it gives you guidelines for what, how to cook, how to cut things and how big um, to cut them. And I often cut them too small. And that particularly can make a difference when you are, um, when, you, when you're doing things with chicken. Um, or, or meat because it means that your meat can get too soft and shred too much. So just keep an eye on um, what it's telling you to do. Got my cauliflower in here. That's going to go in too. 
Uh, and I know Irene was mentioning about leaving, uh, leaving gaps for steam to come through. The other way you can do that too is, I know Boone uses chopsticks crossed in the bottom, but you can also just do um, forks or knives in the bottom as well. And on top of the vegetables in the Varoma, um, red capsicum and green capsicum. So I've got them chopped up here and they're gonna go in here. So heaps of vegetables. And insert the Varoma tray. So I'm popping my tray in and sit on top of my veggies, just fits on there. And 250 grams of um, capsicum, no, not capsicum, um, zucchini. So I've just um, put that, I have, goodness, I do that and cut it all the way through or something. That's really weird. Anyway, um, here we go. That's just gonna go on the tray. So there's a massive amount of vegetables going in there. And then I'm gonna put the lid on. You'll see the TM6 now comes with a, with a dark lid for the aroma. And before I turn this on, I'm just gonna explain what's gonna happen next. So this is gonna steam for 15 minutes, but with our recipes, we can hit the three dots here. We can go recipe detail. So I'm just gonna come down here into the recipe detail uh, and it's going to, so I've got this point here. I'm gonna steam for 15 to 18 minutes, aroma speed, aroma temperature speed one. The next thing is I'm going to add black beans. And I know someone before asked about with the chickpeas, whether they were from a can or whether they were dried. Well, these are ones that I bought um, from the source, took my own bag or my own um, container to fill them up, soak them overnight. And then what I absolutely love about the, um, the blade cover is slow cook them. It cooks them slow. So I just use the chickpea the slow cooking um, chickpea recipe, and there is one for the TM5 as well. Um, and just you just walk away, two hours later, your beans are cooked. And you get a whole heap more than you do from a tin. So it's saving you money, it's saving the environment because there's no packaging. Um, I do have tin tomatoes, that's virtually the only thing I buy in a tin anymore, because I don't can't quite replace those. But just so you, you know, a blade cover, you can um, make a massive difference. So those beans are gonna be added in um, a bit later on uh, and the vegetables are all into the mixing bowl and um, then, uh, yeah, and then, and then they just cook for a little bit longer. But I'm gonna come back to here where I was, I've got my tomatoes in, I've got my water, my sugar, throw my dish, not all those in. Just give it a lid, 15 minutes, aroma temperature speed one. And then we're going to go back to Keisha Boone, please. Uh, oh, can, I just, um, can I just uh, show everyone? I just, it's just ready for me to turn over the chicken and the... the... Sorry, guys, I won't be one second. So basically, after that first initial cook, uh, and by the way, you need to, when you are opening, always open the lid away from you so you don't get a facial. Um, it's asking me to stir my, my pumpkin. So you'll see some of the steam coming up from there. And essentially what I'm doing now is I'm going to move my chicken down. So you can see my chicken's starting to cook at the bottom there. So I'm just moving that through the bowl. So I'm just moving it around so I can get the chicken cooked. Moving my pumpkin a little bit and then just cooking for the balance of that time. So all good, go back to, um, back to Keisha. Thanks for that. No problem. I can smell delicious aromas of uh, Asian flavors. Uh, I've got... Um, uh, uh, coriander and garlic and ginger. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to pour it over the fish and we're going to put some water on top of the fish and it will put, will go through all the flavors. Okay, so that's on. And we don't have to clean the bowl. We're just going to put 200 ounces, 20 uh, ounces of water. So let's have a look. I touch the screen so it doesn't, I've got more than I should have, so that's good. And now place the Veroma. And you can also put veggies underneath 
and you can maybe cook a little bit longer the fish or take the veggies out and have it with the fish. And I have to cut the, um, the tail, it's a little bit too long. Otherwise, uh, I put on 20 minutes on Varoma on speed one. And I will be back in 20 minutes. Perfect, thank you, Keisha. All right, so what we're gonna do now is just have a little bit of a look through cookie do. But before we do that, um, I should have asked this at the beginning, anyone um, on tonight who doesn't have a Thermomix, could they please post um, in the chat box if you don't have a Thermomix? That's the question number one, please. For anyone there who doesn't own a Thermomix? You don't have one, Margie. Okay, great. Well, thanks for coming along tonight and having a bit of a look. Um, anyone there who does not use cookie do? I know, Margie, you won't use cookie do because you probably don't even know what it is yet. Or don't know much about it. We're going to show you in a minute. Anyone else there that doesn't use who doesn't use cookie do? Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to share my screen and just um, run through a bit of cookie do. All right, so one of the things um, that has recently changed is that you can actually go into your profile, view your profile, and you can, um, you can do some, um, you can save your filters, all right? Now, having said that, it doesn't always work on my computer, but it does on my phone. <laughs> so, um, but I have chosen, my Thermomix version really doesn't matter. I didn't have to do that. I could, I, with, with a TM6, you can cook any recipe. For the TM31, um, some of the recipes will be too big, greater volume for your bowl. For the TM5, there are a few TM6 recipes, which if they're using high heat, you can't use. All right, so I've chosen English language. I've chosen countries, United Kingdom, United States, and Australia. I can also choose one of these. So. Heather, you could choose the veggie cook if you wanted to, being vegetarian or vegan. Uh, and if you're someone who, um, I, I know um, Irene maybe, maybe wouldn't do this all the time, but if she's, she's a bit of a chefy cook, so she might want to choose that. And what that's going to do, it's going to offer you um, things, uh, su su suggest various recipes for you. So this is what... Um, I'm not going to do her. I'm sorry. I cannot. I cannot come at kangaroo, but um, and I don't eat pork. But but these are things. So I do eat gluten free. It's monitoring because I've done that, and I've also allowed Thermix to see what I'm cooking. It is suggesting recipes for me. So buckwheat bread, buckwheat and almond sliders. So um, depending on on what you have suggested and what you're cooking, it will um, it will help you with that, which I think is a pretty good idea. But I'm going to come through into see more here. Yeah, and you can see it hasn't saved my filters for me on here, but it does on my phone, as I mentioned before. So um, if you want to add filters, you can come down here. And I generally, we, have, we do things in different ways. Different people do things in different ways. I'm going to show you my way first and, the, and why I do this. So I'm going to put in, um, you know, the, the main other English speaking countries, the United Kingdom and the United States. Okay. And the reason um, that I do that, because then I can come into here and I can look at collections and I can see the most recent connections. And this is one that's literally come out um, in, well, in the last seven days and that's available in Australia. I mean, you get access to everything with Cookie Do anyway. This one is, um, you can tell, this one's American. There's another one here, look, Simply Steam. How good's this? So multi-layered um, meals. We've got a sticky sriracha shrimp bowl, steamed eggplant and ricotta lasagna, paprika, chicken, vegetables, and mashed sweet potato. And this one's got a soup, it's got a fish, um, rice and vegetables. So there's all sorts of, there are so many recipes out there. This one, ham and cheese frittata with chocolate zucchini muffins. So you're making all that at the same time. So that's, that's why I tend to do it um, that way in regards to languages. Um, but you can just put in English and not have any, um, uh, countries, but um, and, and you, it will show you more recipes. However, if I want to see new collections, that's the way that I filter. Going back to recipes, 
Uh, and the other thing where you can use filters is you can decide where, okay, actually there's a really good little category down here. So you can see there's main dishes, side dishes, you've got little kids, the pasta and rice dishes, well, and big kids, soups, perfect this time of the year. And as we saw, Irene's making a soup and a main meal at the same time. One of the other ones down here is quite interesting is menus and more. So here, it's gonna give us um, like whole menus. Um, so we've got, we got, we got soups happening and something cooking on top. I'm trying to find the one, there's one here I've done, I think it was this one. I think Robin was probably on this class. Um, butternut squash soup, fish with rice and vegetables and apple and pear crumble, all cooking in, um, uh, all cooking in total time of an hour, preparation time of 35 minutes. So that's, um, that's pretty amazing. I'm not sure why it's not showing up there. Okay. Um, the other thing we can do from here is, um, sorry, I go back in here. Lost my filters. Um, but if I come back in here, as well as choosing a category, I can, um, if I've got a dietary requirement um, or if I've got an ingredient I want to use up in here, I can pop it in there and it will show me the recipes with that ingredient. If I have, um, if I'm gluten-free, dairy-free, vegan, I can put those tags in there. Difficulty, I don't honestly worry too much about that because everything is step-by-step. -step. Preparation time, I don't worry too much about. Total time is something I look at more. Remembering if you're baking, if you put 30 minutes, you probably won't come up with much because obviously there's baking time included in the total time. But there are plenty of meals that, um, that, and, and other things that you can come up with um, that, that are cooked um, in a short period of time. Now, team will probably be expecting this because this is one of my most, um, this is my, the, the recipe I love more than anything. I can find it. Oh, here we go. So, oh, I've got to find the, the base recipe. I hope I've put that in here. I haven't. Okay, prep ahead, chicken, um, uh, chicken eggs and um, salmon. You can cook all three at the same time. And this was just so that, so again, it's layered. Uh, and then these are different things that you can use some of those components with. So you can eat hard boiling eggs whilst you're steaming some salmon and you're steaming some chicken. So you can, you can uh, um, have your salmon with a meal. There's a great one here. Salmon, asparagus, and potato salad. You could easily make all of that at the same time as you're doing the other things. Uh, and um, and then here are some things you can shred your chicken. Chicken shredded is four seconds speed four is a reverse after it's been cooked. So that um, that is a is a really great one. And I put in here too under saved. Um, I've got where are we? Down here somewhere. Basics: chopping and steaming. Varoma entertaining made easy. So here's some great um, Varoma dishes there. Varoma global flavors. Look at that great Aussie bite. Um, and there is another, there's a book here. Um, where is it? There's a whole book, which um, name escapes me and I'm not seeing it at the moment. But um, in your Varoma, you can also use, um, you know, make um, yogurt. So those little yogurt pots that, um, that, oh, that's just the coconut one. I've only got, oh, here we are. So these little yogurt pots that uh, Irene showed you before that she's using them for spices, you can use them to make yogurt in your Varoma. Um, here's some other options as well. You can also use the white thermo server um, in there as well. And I can't find this um, fabulous flavor every level. Here we go. This is a whole book of um, 72 recipes which are using your Varoma. So um, there we are, that's that recipe I showed you before where you get the, the crumble as well. But there are heaps and heaps of recipes, sticky toffee puddings, um, couscous with chicken, lamb, spicy sausage. So lots and lots and lots of ways that you can, here we are, a steamed chocolate cake. Um, lots of ways that you can actually use your Varoma. So if you wanted to say, make the sardines in parcels with green bean salad, I'm gonna put it in my week. I'm going to add it to my week. I'm going to put it in for um, 23rd, whatever the day the 23rd is, I can't see. Uh, and I'm also going to add it to my shopping list. 
So now if I come into my week, it will be there on the 23rd, here we go. Good, that's a weekend. And um, when you do click into a recipe, it, it tells you all those things like how many it serves, how, how, what the total time is, preparation time. It's an easy recipe. You can read through what's required. It gives you all the um, nutritional value here, your calories, your protein, your carbs, your fats, and tips and tricks. So um, as Irene said, you know, sometimes it will say, you know, add a different flavor. She's doing diff slightly different flavors in her soup. And it will often give you those sorts of tips down the bottom. So always worth having a look there. Now, if I come back into my week, I just, um, I'm gonna, well, this is my shopping list. So um, I obviously have my shopping list there for my chili. But um, here I can go through and I go, okay, I don't need to buy water. I would need to buy the sardines. I've got plenty of olive oil. I've got eggs, I've got my tomatoes, I've got salt, I've got vinegar, and that's what I need to buy, Vegemite, because we run out of Vegemite. Um, and then you add in whatever else you want to do. The way I, I um, do my shopping is I have all this on my, I can do it on my computer, but I use my phone as my shopping list um, guide in the supermarket and click things off. When, um, when I've got them. But you can um, order your ingredients from Woolies Online. So this is um, a great thing for, for people who are used to doing that. Um, we live so close to Chatsden Shopping Centre, I can walk very easily. So no point in me doing that online. Um, here we go. So I wouldn't buy the squeezy because it's in plastic, not, um, not glass. So I would swap that. Uh, and um, so, you, so you have the option of smiling, Smiling fish sardines and tomato sauce. <laughs> That's funny. Um, and then you just add it to your Woolworths cart and, um, and go from there. So really super flexible way. What, what I think is, um, is really great about um, Cookie Do is that you can plan to shop. You can shop to your plan. You're not gonna be spending extra money because you are shopping for what you're gonna cook. And um, that, is a, that is a major plus. So we're saving money. Um, and um, and saving ourselves time because we're planning. Now, I'm just gonna move to the screen of my other TM6 on oh, this other camera. Um, okay, so uh, you can see that. So on my screen, if I want to find those recipes, I can just go onto this little, um, the three lines up there. Okay, and um, I've got my recipes in here. I have a few bookmarks, and I think, oh no, that's not good. But the slow cooked chickpeas is in there. So there you go. That's how you can do any of those pulses. Um, buy them, you know, if you can take your, um, your own containers, do that. Soak them and slow cook. Um, so if we just have a quick look down here, it's literally you soak them, you drain them, you put them in, and it slow cooks them for two hours. Uh, and as I said, you get far more bang for your buck as well with that. Um, we've also got the creative collections um, and save collections in there. And if I come back to here, I've got my week. And um, here we are, these are the recipes we're doing tonight. And you'll see that sardine recipe's gone in there um, that I put in just before. Um, basically, the other thing is, um, we just it's just like a TM5 screen, if anybody, you know, got the TM5. We've got our time, we've got a temperature, we've got a speed. It's a bigger screen. Um, your reverse is here. If you're doing things manually. Um, you can go straight into Cookie Do. So I can start searching for recipes um, straight in here. And can you see that my filters are there? So I've got my five filters are saved in there. Uh, so that's fantastic. I can come in here and I can just look for something straight away and cook. The other thing with the TM6 is when we scroll this way, we've got all these other functions. So um, most of them I use in guided cooking, but we've got the scales, they're, they're one gram increments, um, turbo, dome, so that's kneading, two minutes of kneading in your thermomix is equivalent to 25 minutes of kneading by hand. The pre-clean, got to love this pre-clean. TM5 owners, this is going to be, um, uh, if you've got a cook key, you'll be able to, um, to get this um, update on your TM5 shortly. It may not be quite the same as this, but there is going to be a better pre-clean available, but only if you've got a cook key. If you haven't got a cookie, $189 or upgrade to a TM6, and then you get a bigger screen and other functions as well. But this one, we can, we can do a pre-clean in there, which um, is just amazing. 
Um, uh, we've got a, an automatic blend, the egg boiler. Love the egg boiler. You can um, you put in up to a, a liter of water, six eggs, um, and you decide how you want them cooked. And you just literally turn to you know soft, medium, soft, medium, whatever. Walk away; it'll tell you when they're done. Uh, we've got a kettle mode. We've got a warm up for reheating soups. Thicken, which I use in guided cooking, but um, it is for things like sauces and custards. Rice cooker, self-explanatory fermentation. That's for your yogurts and things. Slow cooking and sous vide. Now, I've showed you that blade cover before. If you're doing um, the slow cooking or the sous vide, it's advisable like, for the slow cooking, you definitely need to have the blade cover in there. You just think about, you know, when you're cooking meat, like, the softer it gets, the more likely it is to shred if you don't have the, the blade cover in there. And the sous vide, you can sous vide using, um, and you can do both of these in your, um, your TM5 as well. But um, the sous vide, you can, if you're only cooking for a, a small number of people, you can um, do it in your simmering basket, but if you want to put more volume, the blade cover is amazing. And I'm not sure if it's still on, but in our clip frenzy, we had the blade cover um, happening there too. All right. So that's a quick rundown of the TM6. And um, I've got to the next stage of mine. So I'm going to remove the Varoma, exactly as Irene said, you always turn it away from you the steam and then you use the bottom of the varoma just to put your um rest the rest of it on so i'm just going to sit that down here i'm actually just going to check my veggies eat sharp knife those are all good all right i think my pumpkin could do with it definitely do with a bit more so I'm going to take the, um, the zucchini off and I'm going to put the pumpkin on for a bit longer and the other veggies here. Um, the great thing with this too is all I need to do is go back. So, and another thing to, to think about now is that next time, you know how I said about cutting them to the right size? Uh, I could cut them a bit smaller next time. I'm going to just put this on for another five. All right. So let's come back to. So um, I just need to know from the rest of the team what's happening and if anybody's got anything they are ready to show us at the moment. Yep, Irene has. Wonderful. Great. Okay, guys. So I've jumped ahead. I've already blended the soup. What I've also done is I've taken my couscous out. I've taken my pumpkin out and I've already started to stir that through my um, through my dressing. I didn't do the chicken because I wanted to show it to you that it's all cooked and the juices are in the bag. So all I'm going to do is open it, let those juices run out, and then I'm going to stir that through. So obviously for those that are trying to keep it, um, so just split this up into, I guess, two batches. You can stir the chicken through one um, and leave the other stuff vegetarian. So I'm going to do that. Um, I've already blended the soup, just follow the instructions 30 seconds slowly. So you start at speed five, then up to speed nine and come back and we'll have it all plated up. Fantastic, thank you. Um, so I'm just going to reiterate what, um, what Irene was saying there about blending. So remembering whenever you're blending something hot, you go up to speed five and then you slowly turn up. Use your ears, you get used to using your ears when you're cooking with the Thermomix but make sure you use your ears. And once it sounds like it's going um, round at a sort of uniform sort of noise, then you can um, gradually turn up to so get to speed nine. If you're blending something cold, you can go straight up to blade, uh, to blade nine, up to speed nine. So um, that's just the difference between the two. I can see Nicole has got people there absolutely busting to have, um, to have dessert. <laughs> Yes, my puddings are ready. They are steaming hot. I'm going to tilt the camera down to see if you can see those. They are now sitting in a lovely pool of sauce. Wow. Looks um, amazing. Make sure you take a photo. Oh, yes, I'll take photos. Of, hmm. I'll keep some aside. I've only taken one out so far. Um, they came out of the moulds really, really well. I was, thought that they were going to stick, but I think it was just like, a, like an airlock almost. So as soon as I kind of jiggled it a little bit, um, it came out perfectly. I didn't actually put the sauce into the fridge because I knew that everyone here would really like a hot sauce with it. 
Um, so I left it out and it's thickened up really nicely just at room temperature. Um, it's kind of coat the back of a spoon kind of um, thickness now, which for me is absolutely perfect. Um, so I'll let someone else show off their food now and I'll go put some ice cream with this and start handing it out. Oh, I, I'm on with Vicky. Um, Vicky said, I'm coming over, I bring the coffee. Yeah. <laughs> we, 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 we could do like a, um, we a progressive dinner. <laughs> yeah, all over Melbourne. Melbourne. So in the, um, in the pots, they did come out slightly. They puff up a bit, um, which is perfect. They're so nice and light. Um, they really come out beautifully with the steaming. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Nicole. That's wonderful. Thanks for doing that. Okay. Um, the other couple, a couple of things I was also going to show you. So I'm trying to get my, my stuff to cook more quickly. So I've actually turned the speed up as well. So it's, I, I, I kept the, the time is on five minutes. I'm still on Varoma temperature. But instead of on speed one, I've turned it up to speed three. So that's just going to create more steam. This I was going to show you. So that, um, Nicole just said that, you know, um, they would they would like their sauce warm. This is a fantastic little um, thermal jug from the um, mix shop. And you can put your gravy or your sauces like that in there and it will keep it warm for you. So like a thermo server, which keeps your food warm for up to two hours, this is great for those sauces. And another, um, there's a couple of things you can get. I don't have the trivet, but this is a tray that you can actually have in your Varoma. So if, um, you know, as Irene said, um, you have someone who um, you, you want to cater for people who don't like meat and people who do like meat. She put the chicken into that sous vide bag. You could also have just put it on here on the tray um, and put your veggies underneath and that would have kept all the juice in here. So that's another option. And there is a little trivet that you can get as well to sit in the base of the um, aroma uh, and that will allow for more um, circulation of the steam. All right, now, how's everybody else going? So, Keisha, how are you? you yeah, I'll finish the fish. I don't know if you can see the fish. Hang on, I'm coming, coming, coming to you. Yeah. Oh, wrong one. The other one. The other one. Here it is. Oh my gosh. I put it on the bed of the rice. Uh, I made it the coconut rice and um, you can have steamed veggies. Like I said, you can cook it with, together while the, cooking the fish. Uh, this fish uh, is big. So I would recommend like depends on the, how much kilo you've got a fish, uh, take it a little bit longer. So go backwards sometimes, check the fish if it's ready. And uh, yeah, that looks fantastic. Thank you. Um, I'm just doing a little bit more on mine. So um, Irene's getting her hands dirty there. We might go over to Irene and see her making a mess there. <laughs> it's all gonna, I told you. Everyone just queue up outside, bring your containers. I'm just, yeah, I'm just putting all my veggies and the beet black beans into the, Sauce. Oh my goodness, it's a super full bowl, I can tell you that much. Wow, that looks amazing, Irene. So we did say it would be a mountain of celery, if you weren't joking. I'm just mm -hmm. going to tilt the camera down a little bit so you can see it. So that's our ginormous salad. Um, literally, this is one I do for Christmas time because as you can see, it feeds the masses and it's quite really, really healthy and tasty. I did blend the soup already. So my soup's ready to go. It's lovely and creamy and thick. And that's thanks to the chickpeas and the vegetables. Um, it's really up to you how you want to finish it. I think a dollop of creme fraiche would be really, really lovely. But again, you wanted to keep it healthy. You saw there was literally the only thing in there was I think 20, 20 grams of um, olive oil. That's it. So really super healthy. Fantastic. I just need you to talk for a little bit longer because I'm not plated up yet. I'm letting the, the pine nuts on. 
Anyone want the address? They're coming over. I'll bring dessert. No worries. Um, and really, the thing for me with this salad is don't go stingy on the herbs. The more herbs, it just really, really gives it that freshness. So I've used mint, the parsley. Um, you can use coriander, spring onions. I've just, um, yeah, whatever, whatever you've got, whatever you can get your hands on. Irene, I think a few strips of red chilli would decorate the dish a lot nicer. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, Any questions? I'm, I'm just making a big mess in my kitchen. So, um, That's okay. I've made a bit of a mess in mine. That's all right. Okay. All right. Um, so, oh, hang on. I better. I, I don't want to show you my other camera because my other camera, it's messy. <laughs> so there's the chilli. Um, it looks amazing. That's our dinner tomorrow night. And a great thing to do is actually just um, chop up a little bit of um, avocado, which again, because I did all the talking, I haven't managed to do, and a little bit of sour cream on there, and that will be absolutely perfect. So at the beginning, I just um, asked you guys if um, to have a think about, you know, is is um, is earning a little bit of extra cash or um, or learning about your thermics. I know Keisha has said she's learned so much since she's come on as a consultant. Uh, you know, we all learn so much from each other. Um, Irene and um, Boone are the bakers in the team. They're just incredible. And we've all got our, you know, our um, little things that, that, we, that we can teach you about. So if anyone's interested in, in becoming part of the team, we'd love to have you. Um, and um, if you're looking to get an upgrade to a TM6, join the team, earn one. Um, and... Um, or if, if you've got a if you've got a TM6 already, just you know think about coming on board. We have a lot of fun doing this. We learn a lot from each other, and uh, it's yeah, it's just fun, and that's what it's all about. So um, I would like to thank you all for coming. Has anyone got any questions at all? You can take yourself off mute and ask. And if not, thank you all for coming. I hope it's inspired you to actually um, use your Varoma and try some different um, different things. And you know, any, any other questions, contact your consultant or who invited you here tonight. So thanks so much for coming along. Lovely to see some of your faces again. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you. A pleasure. <laughs>